The beasts encountered in the dungeons may have been formidable opponents for the hunters in solo leveling series. However, the key antagonist role was played by the monarchs. They turned out to be the ultimate test for Sanjin Wu. Number 10. Legia, the Monarch of the Beginning Legia, once the King of Giants, had a short-lived role in the series. Despite his surprising deceitfulness, he ended up being the only monarch captured by the rulers. After the absolute being's death, Legia was imprisoned on Earth and used to reinforce mana in the human realm. In the end, Legia met his demise at the hands of Jin Wu, who sensed an attempt at betrayal. Due to the fact that he was the only one captured and did not have the opportunity to prove himself in the fight against Jin Wu, I don't think anyone will blame me if I gave him the last place. Number 9. Tarnak, the Monarch of the Iron Body He was an arrogant and self-centered individual, harboring strong disdain and hatred towards humans. This dislike became evident when he wouldn't accept Jin Wu as the second Shadow Monarch, simply because he was human. Despite his immense power as a monarch, Tarnak realized he stood no chance against Jin Wu without Antares. Tarnak's fall occurred because he underestimated the combined forces of Thomas Andre, Beru, and Belion. Number 8. Yogamont, the Monarch of Transfiguration Yogamont used to be one of the nine monarchs created by the Absolute Being. He was known for his prideful nature. Just like the other monarchs, he disliked humans, thinking of them as weak and beneath him. Despite arrogance, he was wise enough to recognize the strength of opponents who surpassed him. This became evident in his encounter with Sun Jin Wu. As Yogamont didn't have a vessel, he couldn't unleash his full power on Earth. It's true that he caused big problems for the protagonist by summoning large numbers of forces during the invasion of Earth. However, in direct combat, he was inferior to the rest of the monarchs. Number 7. Baran, the Monarch of White Flames Baran, the King of Demons, used to have a rather intimidating presence, even though he didn't inhabit a human body. Baran never shied away from a fight. When he faced Ashborn in a previous clash between the rulers and the monarchs, he didn't run away like the rest. Many consider him to be the weakest of the monarchs due to Jin Wu defeating him first. However, please note that the Demon Castle instance was created by the system in order to allow Jin Wu to gain more power. The original Baran was most likely much more powerful. Considering his skills in his weak version and the fact that he never backed down from a fight, in my opinion, Baran can be placed seventh on this list. Number 6. Rakan, the Monarch of Beast Rakan, or the King of Beasts, harbored a deep disdain and intense bloodlust towards humans. He saw them as prey. Despite his high and mighty attitude, Rakan revealed a selfish and outright cowardly nature when confronted by opponents with significantly greater power, such as Antares and Jin Wu. In addition, Rakan displayed hypocrisy when he offered to switch allegiances to Jin Wu in an attempt to avoid being killed. Among characters outside of monarchs and rulers, Rakan stood out for his immense power as a monarch. Number 5. Karisha, the Monarch of Plagues The Queen of Insects and one of the Nine Monarchs was a cruel person. She had a strong desire for violence and liked hunting humans for fun. However, when it came to her followers, she surprisingly showed a caring and motherly attitude. Karisha was among the first monarchs to die in the series. She was a part of Rakan's destructive rampage in Seoul. She underestimated Jin Wu's strength, thinking that she was much more powerful than him. Karisha thought she could handle distractions like Beru while facing Jin Wu, which ultimately led to her quick demise at Jin Wu's hands. Number 4. Hawkwan, the Frost Monarch The Frost Monarch, one of the initial kings introduced in the series, Hawkwan was proud of his abilities, much like the other monarchs. However, he stood out for his dislike of conflict and violence, a trait evident during the Jeju Island raid arc. Despite his aversion to conflict, the Frost Monarch was remarkably powerful. Despite his strength, the Frost Monarch displayed irrational and fear-driven behavior when faced with a greater power. For instance, he attempted to persuade other monarchs to hastily eliminate Sun Jin Wu without considering the potential danger. Either way, I think it deserves fourth place. Number 3. Ashborn, the former Monarch of Shadows The first Shadow Monarch, Ashborn, was once known as the greatest fragment of brilliant light and was a really powerful being in the series. However, he wasn't as powerful as Sun Jin Wu, Antares, and the Absolute Being. The rulers and the monarchs were afraid of him because of his strong dark powers. Unfortunately, during a battle, Ashborn was betrayed by the monarchs he had teamed up with to fight against the rulers. Even though it seemed like he was dead, Ashborn is still alive, living with his successor, Sun Jin Wu. Number 2. Antares, the Monarch of Destruction 
The final bad guy in the series, Antares, was the oldest and strongest monarch. He was created to destroy all life and love causing chaos. Antares didn't like humans and looked down on them. However, he did respect those who could impress him in a fight. Antares had a bunch of abilities that made him strong. He was really powerful, and Jin Wu found him to be the toughest opponent. Moreover, he was able to subdue other monarchs. Number 1. Sun Jin Wu, the Monarch of Shadows the main character in the series, Sun Jin Wu, began as the lowest-ranked E-rank hunter. However, he worked his way up to becoming the strongest in the universe, second only to the absolute being. Jin Wu is portrayed as humble, devoted to his family, and always eager to become stronger. Once he fully absorbed Ashborn's abilities, Jin Wu surpassed the former Shadow Monarch. 